What if Athens, Greece was a Pokemon region? Well, we can see what that might look like with the Talassia region. Hey everybody, Brandon here, and welcome back to another region review where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Talassia region by Maumastex, which is based on Athens, Greece, and is actually kind of a sequel region to the Kianos region, which we covered earlier this month. It kind of has a Kanto Johto thing going on here. So make sure to check that out if you missed it but if you're excited to see this region make sure to hit that like button subscribe and hit that notification bell to help support this channel and keep up to date with future videos probably should be a bit quieter considering we have jigglypuff sleeping right here so starting off the talassia region is our grass starter and that is kitchweed before we got the gen 9 weed cat we got this literal weed kit weed cat kitchweed's cute i think it's a little simplistic it also kind of feels like litten to me but I still like it. I enjoy it. I like how it was a little clover on its butt and then like a tail. It's almost, it almost kind of feels like My Little Pony with a little cutie mark there. Next up, we have our fire starter, Jabair. And if that name is anything to go off of, I'm assuming it's going to be a firefighting type. And I know the comments are going to love that. Jabair is insanely cute though. And I like it. it's a unique concept. It doesn't follow the Zodiac, which is cool because, you know, it kind of started breaking away from that in Gen 9. I really like how its ears look like a bow, but they are still just kind of like ears. That's what they're supposed to be. And now for our water starter, Flowduck. I mean, Malmus managed to predict two of the three animals that were going to be the Gen 9 starters, so that's pretty great. I know Quaxley is supposed to be a blue-footed booby, but its name is Quaxley, as in like the quack of a duck. So I'm pretty sure they're also part duck. I'm, you know, they're kind of a water-based avian. I like Flow Duck though. It's cute. I like its little like kind of nerdy appearance. It almost looks like it's like little nerd glasses on. I also enjoy how simplistic these three starters are. They're very simple, but very effective. Some in the fake one community can make the mistake of having the base stage be too over design. And so there's just no room to grow. So staying simple at this, you know, at least at the start is a pretty good way to go. Next up, we have Tigrass and it's giving me Sabretooth Tiger vibes, which I really enjoy. I will say it's kind of giving me Toracat vibes and this whole line so far is giving me Litten energy, you know, Litten to Toracat to Incineroar kind of energy. I'm pretty sure this thing stands up on two legs in its final evolution too. So we'll see though. Jabair evolves into Panchin, which is a firefighting type, just like I thought. And also, it's amazing. It's giving me Chun-Li vibes as well as Briggsen vibes, and they're coming together in such a great and fun way. I love the little flowy ribbons coming from its hair. I could definitely imagine this thing in-game. It also kind of has like a little Sailor Scout bow going on with the front, and it almost also kind of looks like a flame starting to build. I'm not sure if that's intentional, but that's what I'm getting from it. Next up, we have Platide, and now I'm thinking that this was not supposed to be a duck at all, and I just realized that the tail was definitely a beaver tail on flow duck as well as its little nerdy glasses are actually supposed to be goggles like swimming goggles i kind of like how seeing the evolution made me discover things about its pre-evolution as far as plat side goes i really like its kind of surfer aesthetic and i love the little pattern on its like waist you can see it's supposed to look like little drawstrings of, a, of swimwear. And the final stage of Kitchweed is Tyroger. Maumas even managed to predict the final typing of the Grass Cat starter. I will say the concept of a tiger using its fangs like a knife, really cool. But also, it kind of disturbs me a little bit, the idea of it just breaking off its fang. That just feels painful to me. It just like makes my teeth hurt. One thing that I probably should have pointed out that I haven't by now is you'll notice above Tyroger, it says 134 instead of three. And that's because of the thing I was talking about earlier where this is a sequel. So the dex numbering continues from Kianos. The final evolution of the Jab Airline is Hatsukien. And I have to say, this is definitely my choice for my starter. I love this line the whole way through. It goes from super cute to kind of like cute C, And then finally to like, cute but also can kick some butt it kind of has the vibe of a panda while being based on a red panda i like how the pattern on its fur kind of looks like a gi but also has these like kind of flames going over the gi and the final stage of flow duck is Surtied. i love all the little design details of this mon you can see on its wrist it looks like it has a little shell bracelet it has the drawstring thing going on from the previous stage the surfboard is actually supposed to be a platypus's tail. One note that I will say is it feels very, very conceptually similar to Surflint from his last region, which was a surfer penguin. Kind of both have that surfer plus bird thing going on there, even though they're different types and kind of different concepts. Regardless, Surtide is a really solid design as well. Next up, we have our Root 1 Rodent, and it is Aromice. I love that name so much. That's super clever. Also, its design is 
adorable. It does give me kind of the same vibes as Shaman. The whole literal hedgehog plus the flower and the coloration all kind of come together to give me that feeling. To help with that, I probably would have made the coloration slightly different and then maybe removed the flower just because, you know, flowers are so iconic to Shaman. Aromice evolves into Shrubberry. I really love this concept. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be based on sloths and how they can eventually grow like moss on their backs from how slow they move. I think it's really interesting how we can go from a mouse to a sloth and it still feels natural. I could definitely imagine how this would interact in the Pokemon world and maybe using its berries for something, kind of like how in Paldea they drop certain items, like you could get a shrubberry berry or something. Next up, we have our Route 1 bird, which is Quaylick. Making a little quail electric type with the little thing coming out of its head being a little lightning bolt shaped is so great. It's one of those things when you see it, you're like, oh yeah, that really makes sense. Why didn't I think of that? Also, its coloration kind of gives me like a mask of some sort, like almost like a superhero of some kind. Maybe that's where it's going. I don't know. Quaylick evolves into Runalecki. It's still giving me that kind of superhero, almost the Flash energy to it. I kind of like its cocky expression and then its little hair going out. It kind of feels like an anime protagonist of sorts. And I really like the subtlety of the electric typing. Like you can see its tail is electric shaped and there's like little you know, yellowness throughout the design, but it's not outright like bright yellow. I always find it interesting when you can make a Pokemon feel like that type without using that type's like signature color. Next up, we have Hoppy and... This thing's freaking cute, man. Its eyes and antenna are making me feel like Beedrill, but its legs and the, its general body shape is making me feel like Grasshopper. So I'm a little confused design-wise. Not to say the design itself is confusing, just kind of like trying to wonder where this is going to go. Next up, we have Hive, and it's supposed to look like a hive, I think. It's supposed to be like replicating a hive which I think is fun, like a cocoon replicating the hive. I'm still confused as to what direction this is going to go. Is it going to be grasshopper? Is it going to be bee? Is it going to be both? Okay, it's going to be bee or wasp. I'm not sure. Maybe wasp, so maybe it's neither. I like the bug steel typing. It almost feels like it could be bug dragon. I know he did bug dragon in his last region, but this almost feels that way. And also also evokes kind of superhero it's giving me wasp from from ant-man it's a very solid design though and it's very edgy i can definitely get the steel typing from it next up is muffin which is a poison type and it's like a muffin fiend i've seen this pokemon before and i think the concept is genius a lot of people could say make it part fairy type because it's based on a sweet food but it's pure poison typing plays more into its design it's supposed to be a fake muffin that it wants you to try and bite it so it poisons you kind of like a poison apple situation it looks like a normal delicious muffin or I guess cupcake, but there's actually something more sinister going on beneath the surface. It evolves into Rouvette. I love this kind of method of evolution, something looking completely normal and evolving into this monstrous being. I love the little beading on the top, which is supposed to look like some kind of sprinkles or like cherry on top or anything, but it's actually just multiple monstrous eyes. I love the creep factor of this Pokemon. Next up, we have our Pika clone for the region, and it is Magichu. A lot of people took note that the Kianos region didn't have a Pika clone, so we have one for this region. I will say, though, I'm a little upset that it isn't part Psychic type. I mean, Magic and Psychic type kind of go hand in hand, as well as we haven't had an Electric Psychic type Pika clone yet. As far as design, this thing knocks it out of the park. Having its ears come together like a little wizard's hat and then holding its tail like a little wand are some very clever design choices. I also like that its little electric pouches are purple, which makes me question why it wasn't the Psychic typing still, but you know what? Whatever. Next up, we have Gowl, and that name is so good. Also, I love the typing and the general concept. It all comes together really well. Having that slightly tilted head to make it feel kind of ghostly and like otherworldly, like, oh, that's not right. The design kind of gives me ghastly vibes where it looks like a floating head where the body is just purple and then the head is white. So kind of going to give that differential to make it feel like it's just a floating head. I imagine in a dark place, you wouldn't be able to see the purple as much and you just see the bright white and think it was a floating head. Also, those yellow piercing eyes, you just see yellow piercing eyes and white face. That would be terrifying. Gowl evolves into Banshoot. Also love that name. It's Banshee plus Hoot. Gowl and Banshoot have a really clever naming scheme. I like that a lot. Honestly, I'd probably throw this line on the team. The typing is really solid. Also, the designs are really solid. I just read its dex entry, and this is terrifying. Apparently, the little beak it has is not a beak, and it opens up to reveal its singular eye. That's freaking terrifying. Next up, we have Supider. You guys know what it is. It's clearly based on Spider-Man. It's a bug fighting type, which makes complete sense. If there ever was going to be a Spider-Man Pokemon, I'd probably want it to look something like this. I love its little chibi aesthetic with the little limbs and the you know cute face it even looks like it has a little stinger as its abdomen which is different and it evolves into arachnidae this is just a stellar presentation all the way through it also kind of reminds me of man spider the pose definitely evokes the same pose as spider-man swinging through the city and i can definitely imagine arachnidae doing much of the same i also love the yellow eyes because it kind of evokes the amazing spider-man one where he used kind of sunglasses as the visors next up we have barcliff which is the puppy pokemon and it's rock type 
and I'm pretty sure Rockruff is also the puppy Pokemon and a rock type. And I will say this design feels really reminiscent of his Keonosian Growlithe line. It just feels really similar for me to ignore, but if that Growlithe didn't exist, I think this design is just really solid. I like the mud caked paws and also the kind of stone statue feeling it has to it. Also, it just kind of has a no thoughts, head empty kind of vibe to it. Next up, we have Penfeet, and this looks like it might be a pre-evolution to Surfland from his last region. I'm actually kind of remembering Malmus said to me in the past that his theme for this region was baby Pokemon. That was kind of a part partial gimmick of the region kind of how like in gen 2 we got a lot of baby versions of previous Pokemon it's a very cute design and you can see how it evolves into Surfland and it fills that baby Pokemon role next up we have Piglet and it is yet another baby Pokemon I'm pretty sure it's based on Javanite from his previous region this is why I said you should probably check out the Keanos region before this video definitely come back and watch this video but if you missed the Keanos region review definitely go check that out so you can have a few more things explained in this one also don't mind my panel that's slowly falling off of the wall it, you know it kind of just does that next up we have Shiren which is a pre-evolution to Crushella the one that had the huge eye from Keanos and that name is so good Shiren like a shy little siren I love that idea and she's just in her shell literally she just can't she hasn't come out of her shell yet like Crushella will so adorable and I love how it plays into the concept rather than just making it smaller it has its own concept in and of itself next up we have Misty which I'm pretty sure is a pre-evolution to Mistrevis but it's a fire type so do we have a pre-evolution regional variant? That's a fun concept. I like that. I knew about regional Mistrevis, but I didn't know that there was a regional baby Pokemon. I really like the idea of fusing those two concepts together. Kind of like how I did with my regional mega evolutions idea. This is kind of in that same vein. Next up, we have Otzel, which is a water fighting type, and it's the Stoat Pokemon. So we have Otter, Weasel, and Stoat all infused together. I kind of love when Pokemon is just kind of vaguely mammalian with their Pokemon. They don't just pick one specific mammal to base it on, but generally just a group of mammals that look similar. A lot of the time in Fakemon, we can get bogged down with the like specific details of things like this animal needs to evolve into this animal. It has to be very specific when we have Pokemon like Remoraid and Octillery, which is a fish that evolves into an octopus, or things like the Nido King and Nido Queen line, where it's just kind of very vaguely like oh it's a mouse plus a kaiju plus like what and this kind of gives off that same vibe it's like oh it could be an otter but it also could be a weasel it could be a stoat I'm not certain next up is minicorn and it is a pure dark type horse Pokemon it's the pony Pokemon which I'm pretty sure is also Rapidash's is there gonna wait hold on is this gonna be a pre-evolution to a regional Ponyta I was about to say it looks a lot like Ponyta which was the critique I gave in the Kianos region of the le legendaries in that one but I think this one is actually intentional next up is a regional Mistrevis Talassian Mistrevis and it is a fire psychic type and I adore this concept for a regional variant all Malmus did is flip it upside down and change its coloration it's such a slight change but it's so effective it's like oh yeah that completely changes the design of the Pokemon to make it look like almost a different Pokemon, but you know it's still Mistrevis. That concept also can be applied to regional evolutions, like something flipped over. Also, I love the psychic typing on this Mon. The kind of reddish, pinkish hue that it has to it feels very much like a fire and psychic type. And then the beads have been turned pinkish rather than that reddish color they are in the original Mistrevis. Also, it's hair, how like Mistrevis's hair is kind of dyed at the tips, like red. Instead, it's orange, and so it looks like a flame. It all just comes together really, really well. And if I didn't already have a fire type starter, I probably would put this on my team. Oh my God. God, Otzel is a pre-evolution to Buizel. I was literally thinking, I was like, Otzel, you know, Stoat plus Weasel plus Otter, that kind of feels like Buizel. And now it makes sense. It's a water fighting type Buizel variant pre-evolution. This is such a fun concept because I'm just like, oh, that feels like it could be a new Pokemon, but at the same time, it feels familiar, and that's because it is. If you guys know me at all, I'm really not a fan of the Buizel line, to be honest. I, specifically Floatzel. I like Buizel. I think it's cute. Um, but I really just am not a fan of Floatzel. Next up, we have Talazian Ponyta, pure dark type, and this thing is cool. Oh my gosh, it's so edgy. What an edgy boy. I love that it's the dark horse Pokemon. I think that's such a fun classification because, you know, of the phrase a dark horse. And this is literally a dark horse. Next up, we have a new evolution for Mistrevis, and it is Miss Malice. These lines are getting the hookup. They get a baby Pokemon that's also a regional variant, a regional variant, and then a regional evolution. I wonder if the other two are going to do the same. Probably. That's what I'm assuming is probably going to happen. I really like this one, though. It kind of feels like the bottom is the hat of Miss Magius, but it also is like folded in what I find interesting is it feels like a true evolution to the original Mistrevis it kind of feels like the original Mistrevis but expanded because it has the same hair as the original Mistrevis with this little crown included it gives me Scarlet Witch vibes which I'm pretty sure is intentional just because of the way the crown is shaped and its general like appearance being you know 
like a Scarlet Witch. It's literally Scarlet and kind of witch based. Now we have Spartzel, and yes, it is doing that thing where, you know, new evolution as well. And it's not Floatzel, so that's already a win in my book. I like how it's using its two tails as weapons of sorts. It also has like kind of Spartan helmet thing going on with its crest and general like armored looking appearance because of these like fins that it has going on. Next up, we have Rapidash. So Rapidash is the only one that didn't get this treatment. That's interesting to me. The body proportions feel a little weird on this one to me. Like, it feels like it has a huge torso but then like little legs and then like a massive horn it almost feels like it's supposed to be like a mini pony if that was intentional then that's dope like a mini pony version of rapidash that's fun i also like how you can see a little spirit of flame in its horn wisp to reference its original typing next up we have finray which is a water electric type and this thing just gives me flounder from the little mermaid energy you can most definitely feel the water electric typing in its coloration i mean that's blue versus yellow it's a very satisfying color combo as well as it just kind of exudes those two typings and you can see it has little lightning bolts running through it in its design which is kind of it's pretty obvious why it's an electric type next up we have del bliss and it's a dolphin pokemon that it has like a beak like, i mean i know dolphins have beaks but that's like a like a bird beak Dude, is there a dolphin that has like a bird beak it adds kind of a sinister vibe to this otherwise kind of cheery and bright design which makes it very unique i mean it definitely feels different than palafin which is the dolphin pokemon we got in gen 9. next up we have oni looky that <laughs> that name i love that name oni looky it's just kind of fun to say it's called the creepy pokemon which is understandable this is a creepy little dude if i saw this dude running around i would probably feel uncomfortable though seeing it on my screen it's pretty cute actually it evolves into onisuku which is kind of giving me majora's mask vibes i'm pretty sure this is supposed to be based on orb weaver spiders because orb weaver spiders have this kind of mask almost mask appearance to their like what's it called thorax their butt i'm pretty sure that's what majora's mask is based on it's supposed to be kind of like the orb weaver's butt so it would make sense why I would get Majora's Mask from this. I thought it was going to evolve a step further, but I was wrong. Next up, we have Lycub, which is a normal ghost type. It's called the Ghost Hat Pokemon. Is this the ghost of like a wolf pelt that like people would wear? You know how people used to wear wolf pelts? It reminds me of Wofi and Rugrath from my region, Cornera, where it's a haunted remnant of an animal, which makes me like it a lot, as well as it's just kind of cute and derpy. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a lot of cute and derpy ghost types, but this this one definitely fills that role. Lycub evolves into Spectroof, and you can kind of see it has a little hole at the bottom of it where it like would have been worn, like put on a head. It kind of reminds me of the Ghastly line where it's like, you know just a floating head and now it's got a floating head with arms it's creepy and still has that derp factor which i really like it evolves further into wolf fury and this is definitely definitely inspired by the ghastly line i mean you can see gengar in this design 100 percent it almost feels like this could be a convergent evolution of sorts where instead of gengar it's like a wolf that's an ice type not that that's the concept at all but that it kind of gives me that energy now i want to make that a real thing dang it why did I say that out loud? Anyway, it's a werewolf Pokemon and it's normal ghost type. I like that we have a ghost type werewolf to, you know, kind of reference that it's supernatural. It's hard not to like this design because it definitely evokes those same things that Gengar does and everybody likes Gengar. It's just a pretty universally liked design. Next up is Talosian Sunkern and it's a grass fire type. It's interesting that its face changed and it feels more like a Sunflora's face and then it changed the seed that it's based on. It almost feels like this could have been a pre-evolution to Sunkern just because of the way it's shaped. Like Sunkern feels a bit bigger than this and more wide just a personal note I probably would have just kept the eyes the same because right now it just feels more like Sunflora than Sunkern Sunkern had its eyes open and that was like kind of the difference between them but I do like the idea of changing the seed that Sunkern is based on to make it a completely different type looks like Sunflora got the Alolan Exeggutor treatment and this boy is tall this is fun giving it the grass fire typing that you know a sunflower kind of deserves I did it in Cornera because I thought the same thing it's a really fun way to play on the grass fire type that isn't just you know chili pepper Looking at you, Scovillain. Next up, we have Talosian Cubone, which is an electric ground type. And fun fact about this design, this was actually submitted as a variant for Cornera for a contest I did back when I hit 1K over on Instagram. So this was originally Cornera and Cubone and Marowak, but I ultimately liked the rock type variant that I ended up choosing better. So I let Malmus use this for his region. I just adore this design though, so much so that I almost picked both of them to be in the region and have two variants in Cornera and have it so that this one would hang out near the power plant and then the other one would hang out by Bones Ridge. But I ultimately cut it because I just, you know, two variants in the region has never been done before except for like Gastrodon, but that's not really a variant per se. I just really love this design so much. I just, there's not much more to say about it. It's just a really good design. It evolves into Talosian Marowak and you can see its skull is actually a Zapdos skull, which is so clever and it changes its like tail, gives it a little spikes, little electric spikes. 
and its bone is now like a hammer kind of referencing Thor with the electric typing there it all comes together so well and I love it so much next up we have a variant of Mimikyu which is a very normal type and this one is trying to reference Chonky Pikachu this Mimikyu is trying to appeal to the Chonky Pikachu fans out there which is just a hilarious concept like even in the Pokemon world like somehow the Chonky Pikachu design faded away over time as if in universe there was a Chonky Pikachu back in the day and then it eventually became the more modern Pikachu that we know in universe it's just a fun concept to think about next up we have Nagrog apparently it's Gorgon spelt backwards got it and so it's like a, a Gorgon trapped in a mirror I'll say this is conceptually different than the other two Gorgon Pokemon that he did but there are two other Gorgon Pokemon so this will make a third amongst his two regions now that I'm thinking about it that name is actually really clever because it's a mirror of Gorgon I used to do that with the player character in Pokemon games I would do Nodnarb which is my name backwards because it was like me in a mirror universe of Pokemon it kind of appeals to me in that way actually next up we have Nozzle which is Nozzle plus Azul it's a flying ice type and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be based on a puffin it's super cute I think it's cute it's got a little bit of edginess to it which is just you know a really Pokemon thing to do edgy plus cute Pokemon yay it evolves into Puffreeze so it looks like Nagrog doesn't evolve that's just, that's just a single stage Pokemon kind of got like a Klefki vibe to it I figured Nagrog would evolve eventually but maybe not anyway Puffreeze you can see the little ice type elements in its design it kind of looks dapper has a little bow tie going on there this kind of feels like it could have been a route one bird where there was like a pre-evolution to Nuzul and Puffreeze is the final evolution next up we have Scaldi and I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be based on like the scaly foot snail which is actually what the fire type Gumi in our Gumi of every type is based on it's a water dark type and I love how it's just wearing a little helmet like its shell is a helmet it's a shelmet oh my gosh I will say as far as proportions it does kind of look like a Gumi wearing a helmet in a way it evolves into Molusku and it's, a, it's still a water dark type and it looks like it's trying to emulate a dragon that's really cool it's also kind of cute it's really derpy it's just kind of got this big old smile and it's like the tongue of a dragon is there something called the dragon's tongue snail because that sounds like it should exist and if it doesn't then like someone create that in like some kind of fantasy universe I guess Malmus is doing that here so never mind it evolves further into Malogre it's a dragon dark type okay so now it goes straight up dragon it definitely has an intimidation factor to it I think it's interesting how it changed to dragon at the last second from water dark to dragon dark next up we have Batroll which is a fighting fairy type it looks like we're getting a dedicated Cyclops mon here we kind of had a vague Cyclops mon in Keanos but this one's like dedicated it has like a club for a hand which is fun and I love the fighting fairy type on this thing it makes complete sense you know you know mythical creature that's known for its kind of brutish nature kind of the same vibes as the Grimmsnarl line it evolves into Gigantroll and yep it's a Cyclops mon that's kind of what it is and it feels good like I mean it feels right it's a fighting fairy type it has this kind of muddy caked appearance almost like a ground fighting type in a way maybe it could learn a few ground type moves if we ever get a dedicated Cyclops mon I hope it's something like this I know we have Dusclops which literally has Clops in its name as in Cyclops but I still think we need a dedicated Cyclops mon that isn't just like a ghost type but one that's based on the actual myth next up we have Fluffly it's a normal bug type poodle moth Pokemon <laughs> this thing is hilarious it almost feels like a conversion evolution of a puppy Pokemon that doesn't exist like it's a bug type that evolves dog-like traits to be more like lovable and kept by humans so it could be safer from predators or something I love that concept and the fact that this design kind of gave me that idea makes me love it even more next up is Talassian Meowth and those who've been on the channel for a while might recognize this design because it actually premiered in our Meowth of every type video Malmus already had the idea for this mod but I kind of pushed him to create it so that we could have it for the video and obviously it's based on sphinxes just based on the pose alone and it evolves into to Persian which is a ground psychic type I really love how he used the neck floof to kind of give off that pharaoh-esque appearance of the head of a sphinx I mean not all sphinxes are like that but the very famous one is I also like its upturned nose it almost kind of makes it feel snooty in a way like it has its nose upturned to you next up we have Talassian Diglett and you might have seen this recently in a Diglett of every type check that out if you missed it obviously I love this design it's why I featured it in a Diglett of every type I love its little beard it's a little icy beard and it's little know kind of like ice floor that it's coming out of I'm always a fan of little subtle changes to make a regional variant change its typing like Diglett and Alolan Diglett this kind of does that same thing it evolves into Talassian Doug Trio and I just it, yeah I just love this design it's so great I love the little pattern on the side that look like icy crystals and it has a lengthened beard and you know me I you know I I like beards this line is just fantastic and I really haven't added anything to my team in a while so yeah let's add this to the team next up we have Talassian Stone Journer and ah this design is so good making it a rock water type and being based on the lost city of Atlantis it's just honestly so clever and I just really love this design it's simple and effective and still very much feels like Stone Journer 
Next up, we have you fly, which is UFO plus fly. It looks like this is its solo form, so it's going to be a grouping Pokemon like Wishy Washy, and it turns into a giant UFO of flies. The concept's really fun and makes sense, and I like the you know incorporation of the design to make it feel more alien, but then making uh you know actual alien spacecraft out of it. This one is called its swarm form, which I like that it's swarm instead of schooling. Next up, we have Dwarfe, which is an ice grass type. This thing is giving me like Toad, Bobom, Goomba, freaking Shy Guy energy, just vaguely Mario enemies I guess but I love it honestly it's little winter hat that is also kind of like a bush on its head it seems like it's supposed to be based on dwarves but it kind of just feels vague which is you know I'm not saying that's a bad thing I actually really like that it's vague I, I like I said before I really kind of like those vague designs that you're not can't really tell what exactly it's based on Dwarfe evolves into Joters or Yoters because it's based on Jotunheim I would have gone Jotuners because at least that kind of goes into each other rather than Joters or Jotuners you know it kind of rolls off the tongue better just my personal opinion I'm assuming this is supposed to be like the nurse Joymon of the region I like the idea of the dwarves evolving into the frost giants you know dwarf to giant and also it has the incorporation of wintry clothes into it and it just kind of feels fun I really like its design honestly oh and it looks like we have fossils again and am I going to be as confused as I was last time? So from the magic horn fossil, we have pink horn, which is a rock fairy type. And it looks like it's going to do a little wizard hat thing on its head instead of its horn, which is so fun. I'm pretty sure this is going to be based on the Elasmatherium. So Elasmatherium plus wizard is such a fun concept. The fairy typing makes sense because of magic. I kind of feel like magic can be either psychic or fairy, and it kind of falls between those two, just kind of the based on the kind of magic you're doing. The fun kind of whimsical magic kind of fits into the fairy type, and then the more serious dark magic kind of fits into the psychic typing next up we have rainbow like rhino plus rainbow and it is going on that full-on freaking wizard hat and elasmatherium mixture also throwing in a little bit of woolly rhino in there it's really freaking cute i just love how simple its design is and it's it, yeah it's just frankly just cute next up we have titic which is a rock dragon type i also just noticed that they're both rock type rock fairy and rock dragon and those kind of coincide kind of like how we had the ice dragon thing going on with gen 6. man i really miss traditional fossils you know we haven't had one in like three generations and i'm kind of tired of not having one i realized what we got in gen 9 is kind of equatable to that but still anyway titic it looks like it's supposed to be based on a cockatrice you know like kind of a rooster plus dragon i don't know what it is but the cockatrice always just feels like it fits so well into pokemon like mixing the concepts of a chicken and a dragon together feels like such a pokemon thing to do so it just always feels like it works so naturally as a pokemon design titic evolves into titan zord titan i said titan zord what is this power rangers <laughs> Its name is Titan Zard, and it's based on that cockatrice, like I was saying, but it also references the fact that chickens are descended from theropods, like raptors, who also have feathers in and of themselves. Next up, we have Talassian Yamask, and you'll recognize this from our Yamask and Kafagrigus of every type. It is a pure fairy type, and it's been purified by this eye it's holding. The thing it's holding is supposed to be Arceus's eye, and I think it's supposed to be just a stone that looks like Arceus's eye, but it's not actually Arceus's eye itself. Unless it is, and maybe I'm wrong. There isn't too much to say that I didn't already say in our Yamask and Kafagrigus of every type video so I'll move on to Angerigus which is based on biblically accurate angels and this thing is crazy this is probably one of the most wild designs I've ever seen in the fake mon community and you know what I love that about it next up we have Brassagon which I'm pretty sure is the pseudo legendary of this region and it is a dragon steel type and it plays into the idea of dragons who hoard gold this thing is cute as all hell it looks like a traditional dragon which not a lot of dragons in Pokemon kind of have that traditional like almost Welsh dragon feel to them it evolves into Silvern so we're going from brass to silver now which is a fun evolution of the concept I love when an evolutionary lines concept evolves with the line rather than just you know doing the same thing but bigger you can see it still kind of has brass scales in there like it's still kind of growing out of its brass form it continues that traditional dragon feel but also kind of brings in a more serpentine appearance as well and finally it evolves into Smaugold and we go into the full Western dragon kind of appearance I mean its name is Smaug based on Smaug from you know the Hobbit it's become one with its gold pile which I'm sure that makes it immensely happy I'm sure it would make any dragon happy to be one with the gold that they hoard so that they didn't have to like transfer it everywhere I wonder how do dragons transfer their gold from place to place or do they just leave it and collect a new treasure these are the questions that plague pragmagic's brain next up we have reggie war which is a fighting type legendary titan which is what the you know reggies are formally called I really enjoy this design from head to toe I love its little blade arms to evoke you know war and also it kind of gives off a Trojan horse feeling to it as well as being generally gladiatorial gladiatorial is that a word probably I made it up it's a gladiatorial it means 
like kind of gladiator-esque there you go miriam webster if it exists now i'm gonna feel real stupid next up we have reggie mind which is a psychic type legendary titan and honestly i'm not as much of a fan of this design i know it's supposed to be kind of based on the holistic side of crystals and you know the kind of spiritual essence that they give off but to me it just kind of comes off as another rock type reggie but with reggies it's supposed to be like they're an incarnation of that typing and rocks don't exactly feel like an incarnation of the psychic typing that's just my personal opinion you're free to disagree I just that's that's how I'm feeling on it as far as a crystal Reggie it's a cool design I, I think it's a cool design in general I just don't kind of agree with the uh you know design basis next up we have Reggie Vile and it is a dark type legendary Titan this one's interesting I don't know how I feel on it it's like spiky and edgy like you know dark types are it kind of reminds me of the fencing on like a haunted house you know that kind of metallic spiked barbed look it has to it it also has the devil horns so I'm seeing it more and more as I look at it I do like the different kind of body type it has it's very long and skinny which is very different for a Reggie next up we have Denki Rex which is a ghost electric type and I'm pretty sure this is a legendary Pokemon it's part of a legendary trio that's supposed to kind of mirror the legendary beasts since this is Malmus's Gen 2 he kind of tried to emulate some of the things that Gen 2 did their legendary trio title is the Distortion Hounds so I'm pretty sure they're supposed to all be part ghost type yep next up we have Venorex which is the ghost poison type and it looks like they're all gonna have the Rex suffix as, as a part of their name kind of like Tornadus Landorus and Thunderous this thing is definitely eerie it gives off that ghostly miasma kind of gives off the same vibes as Ghastly because that is also a ghost poison type miasma is such a good word for ghost types because it you know incorporates both a kind of like a poisony miasma as well as a ghostly miasma it almost gives off Kitsune vibes but but I know it's supposed to be a dog that's the difference between the legendary beasts and this line is these are supposed to be straight up dogs where the other ones are more vaguely cat-like and almost you know that's why they're called the beasts they're not very much dog or cat they're kind of a mixture of both and finally we have samurex which comes from samui which means cold in Japanese and then rex that suffix we've had before it has that ghost ice typing and it looks super intimidating I love how this mirrors the legendary beasts it feels really cool like it feels unique in and of itself but also kind of feels like an homage it also kind of gives me Jolteon energy with its general spikiness which I love Jolteon it's one of my favorite evolutions next up we have Mark Tyrant and I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be like the legendary Pokemon of the region it's a dark dragon type and it looks like it comes from the distortion world actually this thing is definitely intimidating and very much gives off that legendary feeling it even kind of has the same eye as the creation trio with the you know black part of the eye and then the red iris I'm pretty sure the plot of this is kind of supposed to be an extension of team Galactic where Mars ends up taking over Team Galactic and trying to get back to the distortion world and I guess Martyrant must be another Pokemon that comes from the distortion world like Giratina looks like we have another legendary trio this is Almina it's a fairy grass type and it's the youth Pokemon I wonder if this is going to do like a Hakate kind of thing where it's the maiden the mother and the crone because this one's supposed to be the youth Pokemon it's Almina which comes from minor next we have Almaga which is the matriarch Pokemon yep nailed it hit it right on the head it's a fairy fire type it kind of looks like a grown-up version of Almina but you know switching the type it's got a very wizardly vibe to it and finally we have Almasta which is the wisdom Pokemon it's a fairy ice type looks like it's supposed to be the old hermit that secludes themselves to the icy mountains but also is a part of the mountains the name of this trio is the magical sisters trio and I really like that I, I just this whole trio is really nice and I love the you know Hakate vibes it gives off with Hakate being kind of like the mother of witches from my understanding and the Pokemon don't stop here because we have the gimmick of the region which is called Typecraft this is kind of like terastalizing but if they actually changed forms when they changed types so starting us off is Tyrogre and it's a water dark type now I love the switching of concepts because its teeth used to be its main focal point but now its claws are also it looks like it has this hat that's like almost giving Kappa vibes and the grass on its pelt has become more like swamp like as you well know I love the idea of taking a Pokemon and just kind of slightly shifting its concept and type I mean that's kind of like the focal point of my channel I forgot to say these are called alpha Pokemon so this is alpha Hatokian and it's a grass fighting type there's some very simple changes here we have like little rows coming out instead of like the flowiness of its buns and uh it looks like it's you know gi has turned into more of a robe and you can see the pattern on its sides it's kind of been more floofier almost polleny or kind of flower like next up we have alpha certide and it's a pure fire type and I love this I think more than the rest taking the watery elements and making them fiery and like kind of like flames rather than the swirling water effect it just works really well and I love it how it's kind of like a explosion wristbands kind of like Bakugo from My Hero Academia vibes I can imagine this thing surfing on waves and not even being scared of them and just making like steam as it rides the wave next up we have alpha magichu and it is a psychic type okay okay 
I take back what I said, Malmus. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I understand now. So the Alpha Magitu is a Psychic type. Rather than making it Electric Psychic, it has an Alpha type that is uh, it is Psychic type. And I just realized it switches the coloration so that the purple is more prominent and then the yellow is its cheek color. That's really fun. And it also gives me that like the Cat Witch from Soul Eater. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but it kind of gives me those vibes. We have Alpha Miss Malice, which is a Ghost Psychic type. Interesting that the, the Alpha type switches back to the, you know, its original typing. That's kind of fun. Is this supposed to kind of reference Agatha? I'm not sure if this was around during WandaVision but maybe is this supposed to reference Agatha or her being like the purple witch I can kind of see it in the design and if that's the case this is really fun next up we have Alpha Wolf Fury and it is a dark ghost type and this thing is intimidating as hell yo it went from like kind of cutesy and Gengar-ish to like straight up like a demon next up we have Alpha Plumster <laughs> If you remember, Plumster was from the Kianos region and it was like kind of kind of like a Mario-esque Pokemon. And now this one is Luigi and it's flying type to reference Luigi's really high jumps. Luigi throughout the franchise has been kind of known for the fact that he can jump really high. And I think he can kind of do like a floating thing a little bit too. That's all around a fun little Nintendo nod and I love it. Next up, we have Alpha Celadon and it's a fighting electric type going full on Zeus mode with it. I love that. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be kind of a Poseidon reference before, but now it's like just full on Zeus, got the big flowing beard. It almost kind of looks like Thor, actually, because it has like the lightning hammer. Maybe it's both. Who knows? Mixing different mythologies. That's what Pokemon does all the time. Next up, we have Alpha Zephon. It is an ice fighting type. It was an electric fighting type before. And I love this because it references the, you know, snow clouds versus thunder clouds. I'm sure there's more scientific way of saying that, but that's what the, that's what it's referencing. And that just makes this super fun. I mean, it, you know, it's lightning bolt limbs are kind of more icy now. It kind of looks like icicles. It's kind of giving me tornadoes, thunderous vibes. Next up, we have Alpha Milkow or Milka. Was it Milkaw before? And I just called it Milkow. Either way, it's now a psychic fairy type. And it's like using like milk bending. It's like making its milk into a vortex. <laughs> if I wasn't disturbed by Milkow or Milkaw before, I definitely am now. Next up, we have Alpha Heracles. And I know it's based on Heracles, not Hercules. I know I messed that up. To be fair, it says Herocules, not Herocles. So it can be both. Now it's leaning full on into the kind of Zeus theming it had before, being a pure electric type. Also, its hair reminds me of Jorno from JoJo's. <laughs> and I just love its leotard. It just feels very epic and just ready to, like, strike you. Haha, <laughs> get it? Lightning strike? Anyway. Now we have Alpha Hippobomo. Was that always its name? I feel like Hippobomo does not feel like it was its name before, but it's a water type now. Um, and now its feet aren't doing the creepy thing and it's very zen. It's kind of doing Tai Chi. We love to see it. I just realized it's literally water bending, and water bending is based on Tai Chi, so that makes sense. I love a good avatar reference, so this is great. Next up, we have Alpha Darkophagus, and it is a ghost fire type. This thing is creepy. <laughs> if it wasn't creepy enough with its kind of Cophagrigus hands that it has, now it's even creepier because it now has like these fiery orbs that it could probably summon at you i will say the design doesn't change too much aside from the like orbs which you know whatever i mean it doesn't have to be exactly a huge change it also is kind of giving me like the nurses from silent hill like the way it's posed the pika clone got an alpha form and now pikachu itself has gotten an alpha form it is pure dark type and it is definitely referencing gorochu you can just see it from its more aggressive vibes in the way it's holding its tail and also the coloration itself which is just great also its ears are kind of like straight up and they almost look like horns kind of like an oni Next up, we have Alpha Eevee, and I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. This, this is a lot to take in. I won't even lie to you. Like, Long Neck Eevee, I didn't think was going to be a part of my day today, but now suddenly it is, and now it's part of your day as well. I don't, I don't know how I feel. The Long Neck doesn't feel like it really fits the body. Like, I feel like the body should be also a little bit longer than it is. Aside from the wonky proportions, if this, I feel like if this had just had a, had a, had a short neck, I feel like I would have liked it a lot more. Like a dragon type Eevee is a fun concept. Like every part of this design is working for me, except for the long neck, to be honest. Next up, we have Alpha Spartzel, and it's a water steel type now, and its tails have axes on them. This thing is epic, dude. And its coloration is really nice and pleasing to the eye. It's kind of giving me Garurumon energy with that dark blue against the white. Looks like we're getting alpha versions of his original starters from Kianos, and this is Alpha Neck Queen, which is a fire psychic type. I love that it's doing kind of a mag mortar thing where its arm sleeves have now become like cannons. It also looks very sinister and not as pleasing, whereas like Neck Queen before looked like a kind of like a pop star. This looks like it's like mortal enemy. Almost like Neck Queen was a magical girl, and this is also a magical girl, but it's like the evil magical girl, Sailor Moon style. I guess I was wrong because I thought there were going to be the other two, but I guess it's just Neck Queen. 
And then we have Alpha Galadon, which is a water ground type. Galadon was kind of the DLC legendary Pokemon of the Keanos region. And now it has its own alpha form where it's based on Sphinx rather than Poseidon. And surprisingly, this fits its design so well. Like before, it kind of had this like mermaid-esque thing going on with it, like or a merlion kind of thing going on with it. That's what I love about this type shifting concept is you can kind of shift the type and it also shifts the design inspiration a little bit and it still makes sense. And finally, we have Omega Martyrant and it is a dark steel type so this looks like it's its form when it's in the distortion world kind of like Giratina has its origin form this thing is freaking wild looking like it, it's giving like kaiju it's beefed up like it, it, it's got some freaking haunchers bro look at those legs it kind of reminds me of Transformers Beast Wars which I actually just had a trailer recently but like the original where it was kind of like an animal and then they would transform and it still had like kind of animalistic traits to it but also it kind of had like a more humanoid appearance. And finally, we have Alpha Almina, Almaga, and Almasta, and they all come together to form like a Hakase Pokemon. I like how they all come together to make the same Pokemon. I don't think this is a fusion per se, but like just kind of each individual's alpha form. I would love to see the Lake Trio do something like this. Honestly, I could kind of see it. And those are all the Pokemon of the Talasia region. So thank you guys so much for watching. And with that, I will see you guys next time.